Uh, my name is Dan Slotolo. I work at uh, Shriners Hospital in Philadelphia. It's a hospital for children. My parents were uh, architects, and uh, I saw kind of their life, and I knew I didn't want to do that. And I'd always been interested in science, and I, but I think science for me was too, um, too devoid of people contact. So I wanted to do something that had uh, sort of scientific rigor, but at the same time involved creativity and involved working with people. I have a bias towards sort of the mechanics based on my parents being architects. So I really enjoyed, uh, I enjoyed sort of the structural elements of orthopedics. I enjoyed the fact that it was uh, making people's lives better, not necessarily prolonging life or, or doing the kind of things that, um, that are, uh, uh, I guess, a little bit scarier. Um, but uh, it was, uh, and the, the reason I chose hand surgery overall is because I think it's, it's, uh, it's overall, the, for me, the, the most mechanical of all uh, subspecialties and it allows for a lot of creativity in the, in the field. I mean, it's great working with kids all the time. And uh, you really can make a difference in somebody's whole life going forward. I and mean, we take a lot of kids who um, can't feed themselves, uh, can't go to the bathroom by themselves. And you turn it around so that they have a completely different life. And you get to see them from very early ages uh, progress. And you get to kind of see your work uh, mature as these kids mature and move on in life. And, it's a, uh, it's, it's really, it's a fantastic job. I mean, there's very few other jobs where Right, Dr. Thompson and I met when uh, I was his attending and he was a resident uh, with me at the University of Maryland. And uh, I used to do the casting workshops, which was essentially me and the entire residency uh, getting together. And I would show them how to put on casts and splints. And he kept asking, and he had a background in publishing. So he asked me, has anyone, wh where do you learn to do these things? Has anyone put together a, a book or a pamphlet or anything? Where are you learning these things? And these are, you know, the techniques are, are techniques that you accumulate uh, over time. And you pick up from people, tips and tricks. Um, and there's really no place where you can go, or well, there wasn't a place where you can go to really learn how to do these techniques in, in a way that was, uh, again, sim simplified. I had the, the real privilege of working with a lot of talented people who are kind of the old school people who still knew how to do CAS. And I think that uh, one, one of the big drives for the book is we didn't want those techniques to die. We didn't want those, the art form of casting, the art form of splinting to disappear with the generation that's going to be retiring in the next 10 or 20 years. The target audience for the book uh, would be anybody who would be putting on a cast or a splint uh, in the course of their practice, so any frontline practitioner. Um, what I was seeing in my practice, and I think what most people uh, who are treating musculoskeletal disorders uh, see in their practices are uh, badly made splints, badly made casts, uh, that very often harm patients more than they do them good. Um, splints that go too far and immobilize too much or don't immobilize enough, or ace bandages that are put on too tight, or um, all sorts of uh, problems that you can get with splinting and, and I, or casting. And I think our goal really was to try to improve the standard of care of these casts and these splints so that uh, patients can be better served.